and welcome to Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science here in Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm really excited for this campus tour because this is my alma mater. Uh, I graduated here in 2001 and it's been probably 15 or 16 years since I've been back here to visit. So a lot of memories going on. Uh, just it's a very nostalgic day for me today to be back here. I'm excited to show you the campus, to check out the improvements they have made here and all the new things that they're doing. So let's go inside and take a tour. Hey, I'm uh, Jack Lechner and I'm the president of the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science. I, got my, I came into the death care profession in 1973 and uh, I spent 10 years as a licensed funeral director in New Jersey before deciding to serve the nation in the United States Army. I enlisted as an infantryman and before I knew it I had third, served 30 years in the Army uh, including uh, you know, multiple deployments to Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, the Gulf War, uh, served a couple tours in the Pentagon and when I was getting out of the Army, uh, I was asked to stay in the Army and, and I was sent to Arlington National Cemetery because of the issues that were going on there. Um, I spent five years at Arlington National Cemetery, finishing up my last year as the superintendent. And uh, while I was at Arlington, I was approached by the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science and uh, I accepted and was appointed the uh, position of president and CEO in January of 2016. This is this is a give back time for me. Uh, my career is over. Uh, this is probably my last job. Uh, I'm here because I want to be here. I'm here because I'm excited to be with the students. But more importantly, I'm here because I feel like I have uh, an opportunity to shape funeral service in the 21st century. And that's Hi, my name is Hillary. And I am from California. And what I like the best about CCMS is truly the size of it and that all of the teachers really want you to succeed and they're in it uh, for you, for your future, and it's not about just churning out people. It's about actually, like, caring. And I'm Arielle Milner. I'm from Garfield Heights, Ohio, and what I like about CCMS is the instructors. They're very involved, and they're really trying to give us more skills than just being good um, you know, directors and embalmers, so they're being very helpful. clinical lab we're going to get a good tour inside with Wanda who is the clinical director here at CCMS. Embalmer Funeral Director, an instructor and the clinical director here at the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science. 
And um, talking about our clinical lab or introducing you to our clinical lab, one of the things that we really um, are proud of and are grateful for is the opportunity we can provide the students with embalming. So we have a relationship with a local anatomical donation program, which allows us to have around 500 embalming opportunities per year for our students. Um, because they are anatomical donors, they are donating themselves for education and research and learning, and they are preserved for a longer period of time than you would um, do temporary preservation for funeral homes. So with that said, we have to do um, a embalming process that is very similar to a funeral home setting and allows our students to learn in that environment, you know, how they're going to prepare someone's loved one for a public visitation or some type of viewing in a funeral home setting. But then we also re-embalm them or re-inject them a second time for that added or extended preservation period required for donation. My name is Marky Mathis, um, and what I love about CCMS is mostly the community. It's a really good place to be, um, a lot of really good leadership. My name is Emily Dunford and the thing that I love about CCMS is how wonderful everybody is who works here as well as our students who are in class with me. Everybody's very supportive and everybody has the same goal which is to help our community. Hi, uh, my name is McLean Adams. Uh, one thing uh, I like about CCMS is the immediate family kind of culture that I felt around here. I felt super comfortable from day one. Uh, came in from Cleveland, Ohio and just made friends first day and the staff super awesome and it's just super comfortable here. Become president, what are the most immediate changes you made to curriculum or facility? Well, <clears throat> as most people understand, mortuary schools, funeral service programs, what happens is uh, we are required to teach the American Board curriculum. Right. And it takes about a, it takes about a year to deliver the American Board curriculum. So. Uh, most licensure is centered around that year of funeral school. Unfortunately, that curriculum is slow to change, slow to continue developing. There's a lot of good people working on it all the time, but again, it's slow to change. Uh, the client families we serve today, their needs are evolving much faster than, mm -hmm. the, than the program is. So we've taken a lot of steps to move forward and to evolve the program. Uh, in the spring of this year uh, coming up, we're going to uh, break ground for the Educational Cremation Center. It'll have uh, a state-of-the-art uh, cremation system in there from FT uh, USA. It's, uh, it can cremate within in 75 minutes, has dustless processing station. We'll have alkaline hydrolysis in there. We're going to expand our pet loss program in the fall uh, and use alkaline hydrolysis for the uh, disposition of the pets so we can teach the science of alkaline hydrolysis and uh, they can understand that at the same time with dealing with pet loss and uh, the expanded pet loss curriculum. Uh, we've added a, a hospitality portion of the program that will be taught in that uh, new educational cremation center starting in uh, uh, probably about a year from the groundbreak in the following January. And uh, there's some other things that we're developing for that program to include a funeral director only track. There's a lot of states, Ohio being one of them, that doesn't require mortuary education uh, mm -hmm. for funeral directors only. And so we want to make sure that that funeral director only gets some type of professional education uh, right. before they get into the public. Because right now there is no attending of any specific class for just the funeral director no. licensure. 
Not well in the state of Ohio. No, they have to right. have a bachelor's degree, but it can be in any subject, any discipline that they want, and then they serve a two-year apprenticeship. And I think what the funeral director only track could do is we can teach bereavement, uh, you know, the soft skills of uh, of dealing with bereaved families, grieving individuals, uh, the the idea of pet loss and and uh, the grief associated with pet loss, and the details associated with disposing of the uh, the pet. We can also teach them very quickly about the ethics, the ethics of the uh, profession that are required. Get them certified in cremation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that, that we could do in a in a in a four month program. We're planning on aligning the funeral director only program with the fourth semester. Okay. When it comes to um, body work here, what is your requirement in terms of how many? Uh, preparations or what type of activities with preparations you know do you have to raise certain vessels do you know what what are your requirements yeah the uh, the embalming program is awesome mm -hmm. uh, when I went to funeral school the first time we didn't have a lab mm -hmm. and so the 20 of us in the class each went back to the funeral home we worked at and what skills we learned was totally dependent on how good our preceptor was <laughs> or how our preceptor ran his or her funeral home uh, today at the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science, we do well over 500 embalmings a year. So there is plenty of opportunity for every student to go through their three semesters of uh, embalming theory, and then while they're going through those three semesters, every week they have a lab. Uh, and then they're also allowed to volunteer for uh, uh, labs in between the uh, semesters and on weekends. So a lot of students will come in and get uh, embalmings over and above what the requirements are. The clinical director, uh, Wanda Lee, uh, maintains a rubric and uh, the students come through and they raise vessels and it's annotated on their rubric and she certifies it so that when they get done they've raised all the vessels that are required they've participated in all the embalmings required they participated in casking dressing uh, cosmetizing and uh, and actually setting up uh, the remains in a visitation setting or a funeral setting mm -hmm. I came into the death care profession in 1973, and the cremation rate, the national cremation rate, was 5.69%. In 2016, most funeral directors understand that it, it hit 50%. Uh, in 2018, the numbers came out about three, four months ago, and the national cremation rate was 53.8%. NFDA, the National Funeral Directors Association, has extrapolated and done some statistical analysis and they've determined that it'll stabilize at 80% in 2035. There are 57 mortuary programs in the United States, and none of them are teaching hands-on cremation. Uh, the cremation curriculum is about a three and a half page outline, uh, maybe a few more depending on the, the glossary and some other things you add to it. But the fact of the matter is uh, it, it's inadequate for the amount of cremation that's taking place in the United States today. I think probably the most important thing we're getting ready to do is the educational cremation center. You know, not only will students end up making sure that they maintain a chain of custody with the deceased, they make sure that the identity of the individual is never disassociated from the remains. Uh, they'll make sure all the proper forms, uh, authorizations, forms, uh, the return of the remains all takes place in a, in, under a, a strict chain of command, uh, or chain of custody rather. And the other thing, that's really important is to make sure that we add some ceremony to the cremation. In our cremation center, we have a visitation room, a viewing room that has a window you can look into the crematory. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we'll have the remains on a slumber bed. It's so much easier to walk in and view a loved one on a bed than it is to view them in a casket. And with cremation, I think it presents the perfect opportunity for that. Uh, I've talked to friends that have these uh, set up in their funeral homes and they recount stories about how the family will walk in, sit on the edge of the bed, hold their mother's hand, and then say, Let, I don't want the cremation to take place right away. Let's wait uh, until I can get some other family members because they're so pleased with what they're seeing and the experience that they're having. And I think that my generation and some older generations 
uh, kind of stuck our head in the sand and turned a deaf ear to cremation rather than embracing it and making sure that we added the ceremony that's supposed to be with a funeral into that cremation process to satisfy the needs of those bereaved individuals, those grieving individuals, rather than allowing it to just become a price point because we didn't pay any attention. You know, the uh, Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science is the oldest mortuary college in the United States, established in 1882. Uh, we've graduated 12 presidents uh, from the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science who uh, went on to become uh, presidents of NFDA. Uh, we've injected ourselves into the national discussion for funerals and national leadership for funerals. And we don't say we're the best because we're the oldest. We like to say we're the oldest because we're the best.